There might, of course, be other ways to reduce the GP workload and improve access to treatment. You've already touched on perhaps reforming the repeat prescription mechanism, because at present that has to go through the surgery. How about deregulating more medicines? Uh, and what I mean by that is reclassifying medicines from prescription only to pharmacy only, which would equip the community pharmacist with a much broader range of medicines to provide over the counter. First of all, on repeat prescriptions, in this era of um, uh, modern technology, there should be no reason why we cannot have a greater role for community pharmacists in, in, um, in making these arrangements. The community pharmacists build up a rapport and an understanding of their patients in the same way the GP does. And I found this very directly here in Leicester. And this, the, the, there are particular circumstances in Leicester because of our international um, status, if you like, where it's often the community pharmacist who can speak Gujarati, Punjabi, um, Urdu, who has got very close relations, particularly with older patients who, because they become, as they get older, sometimes um, find it easier to speak in Gujarati or Punjabi rather than uh, 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 English. So there's a very strong bond and relationship between the patient and the pharmacist. And I see no reason why the pharmacist cannot have a greater role in repeat uh, prescription management. And that is something, I don't know if you've seen the Lancet report, which was published a few weeks ago, or, well, probably actually before the summer now thinking about it, it was, that was one of the recommendations of the Lancet, a very substantial piece of work produced by the Lancet on the future of the NHS. And they talk about, because of using technology to allow ele electronic prescriptions to be uh, repeated. It's, it's, a, it's not just about farm, it's, a, it's across the whole board of the NHS, but it is one of their recommendations. On the deregulation of uh, uh, medicines, of course, in principle, I think that uh, needs to be looked at. I, have to em I always emphasize when I do discussions such as this, I am not a clinician uh, and, and I, uh, I do not have any medical training. I am a politician. So obviously these decisions in the end have to be clinically driven um, uh, I, 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 and I have to be careful on that front. But as a principle, as a principle, I can see the merit of it and I would want to look at what, is a, what, what, it, what the possibilities are on that front most certainly. Thank you. I'm sure many of my colleagues would be very happy to provide a list. You've already mentioned the steady decline in the number of pharmacies, but of course we're also facing a shortage in the number of pharmacists. What steps might be taken to increase the number of pharmacists to meet our needs? It is, I've spent time, um, at, you know, at the universities here in Leicester, we've got De Montfort and Leicester University, both of them, I mean, there's a medical school here, and both universities are very much involved in medical training at, at different roles in, in healthcare, but both universities is a big part of their offer. So I know how important it is to uh, encourage people to uh, train to become a pharmacist, and we would want to look at how we can make that easier. We're short of 210,000 um, healthcare uh, staff that's across health and social care and that is only going to become uh, a bigger number as society ages and as we age as you know we develop a wider variety of um, chronic conditions we are going to need as a country to put big investment into workforce development it has to become a priority and community pharmacy and pharmacists are absolutely key to that because if you need to manage whether it's diabetes or hypertension or kidney problems, you are going to need that army of pharmacists in every community, whether they're on the high street in, a, in, their, in their individual uh, uh, community pharmacy uh, premises or whether they're directly linked to uh, um, a primary care hub or, a, or you know, a general practice surgery, we're going to need more. So we've got to put the investment in, we've got to expand the training places, we've got to make sure there's proper support for the students as well who are embarking on the relevant courses. And of course, from 2026, they will all be qualified as prescribers the day they leave university. Yes, and, and that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is so important. There's an interesting debate about how you encourage more to look, think about general practice as an option. I mean, this perhaps is more directed at potential GPs than community pharmacists, although I'd be interested to explore it further. But you know, we know, for example, that uh, a potential GP spends a lot of their time training in the acute sector. 
they might spend a lot of their time doing orthopedics, even though they want to be a GP. So why, why are we training so many GPs in hospitals and not training them in general practice? Now, it's not quite the same with community pharmacy, but we've got to think about how we make sure that they get proper training as well uh, in the appropriate places is the broader point I'm making. And I'd be interested to explore that further with, our, with the community pharmacy community. Now I'd like to step back and ask a broader question. And it's this. What do you think we should be doing to raise the profile of the profession so that all politicians are as well informed about what pharmacy can offer as you are? I think one of the most valuable things I've done as a member of parliament and as the shadow health secretary is spend time shadowing frontline NHS staff. And I've done that with community pharmacy. I've done that with district, uh, sorry, with health, like with health visitors. I've done that with GPs. I've done it. I've done that with um, nurses. I've done it with uh, anaesthetists. And I think I would encourage every community pharmacist to write to their MP and invite them to spend a day with them. All right, you're not going to get the full picture, obviously, but at least you get a flavour of it. At least you get a flavour of it. And I think that's really important. I think there's, it's incumbent upon us politicians to champion community pharmacy. And I think as the NHS is restructured locally, as it is at the moment with the integrated care bill, I actually think that's a distraction to be frank, but anyway, we are where we are. As the NHS is restructured locally, it's vitally important that the community pharmacy, pharmacy is not forgotten again in those restructures. Part of the problem with the Lansley reorganization 10 years ago or so, is that essentially the reason why the sort of ailment first service was abandoned it's because CCGs decided it was not in their financial interest to fund community pharmacists because it because they didn't have a their, their voice wasn't I don't believe was institutionalized in a proper way in that structure. So if we are moving to integrated care systems, I think we've got to make sure community pharmacy's voice is is properly heard and they are properly represented in those structures as well. And I have one last question. Do we need more imaginative ways of funding high cost drugs? I mean, we definitely do. But uh, re reform of the pharmaceuticals uh, and life sciences is something, we're, it's something we need to look at. We need to think about what, what we get in return for the investment that we put in via R&D. I'm very much in favour of investment via R&D, by the way. Um, but we need to think about what we get in return. Uh, and this is going to become ever more vital. I mean, you've mentioned drugs, which is quite right, but as we understand more around uh, healthcare data, and we know that therapies and drugs can be, and, and uh, you know, other interventions can be developed on the back of that, we've got to make sure that we get a fair deal for the NHS and the taxpayer throughout all that process as well. But it's a, you could have a whole, we could have a, a day long seminar on how we reform, <laughs> reform that, but that's something we've obviously got to think about. Thank you. Jonathan Ashworth, Shadow Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Thank you very much for giving us an insight into the Labour Party thinking about the way in which pharmacists might be used effectively. For more information about this topic, please visit our website using the link in the description and be sure to sign up for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, sign up using the link below. And thanks for watching.